Man, Indian knows how to make a good looking bike, man. This is gonna be a good one. What's going on guys, Chase on Two Wheels here at Mountain Motorsports in Roswell. In front of us, we have our loaned 2022 Indian Scout Rogue. Hopefully that person's okay. So yeah guys, this is the 2022 Indian Scout Rogue. We just got this as a loaner bike. So we're gonna have it in the shop for a little while. So you guys know the first video we had to make on it was our first ride. I am super excited. We got forward controls. We got a super low seat height. If all the specs are right, this thing should be super fun. Let's see what it looks like and let's see what it sounds like. Alright guys, that's what it looks like. That's what it sounds like now. Before we get started, we do gotta say thank you to a company for supporting the channel. Let's get to an ad real quick. This first start is brought to you by WBRGarage.com, where we take wreck bikes, we turn them into dream bikes, and we give them away to viewers just like you. If you would like to get entered into this season's giveaway, head over to WBRGarage.com to get entered for as little as $5 a month. Also, for the rest of season five, we're giving away two times entries. That's WBRGarage.com, two times entries entries for the rest of season five for as little as five bucks you can get 10 entries per month and back to the first ride all right guys uh <laughs> look how much the black quad lock blends into the whole blacked out bike that's actually a good look all right guys let's get on this thing look at the key oh no the key's in my pocket hold on hold on i got the key in my pocket it's in a cool spot and i love the way i love the placement of the key spot on this bike super tiny little key check it out and then it goes in this little hole and it's got guards. I love it. Very cool. Let's get this thing cranked up. Absolutely. I gotta be honest, man. Cruisers are starting to really grow on me. Oh, it's funny. All right, guys. Uh, so I have a 32 inch inseam. And as you can see, I have super bent legs. I don't know if I've ever had more bent legs than I have right now. I am, <laughs> I feel super low to the ground. So, uh, that's pretty crazy. That's a first. All right, guys, let's get this first ride started. And guys, uh, if you are fans of Discord, we've got a pretty cool motorcycle-focused Discord server for you. Uh, there'll be a link in the description if you guys want to check it out. No, not everybody's a Discord person, but if you are and you're into motorcycles, but you're watching a first ride, I imagine you are. It's a cool place to hang out. Go check it out. All right, let's get her going. Woohoo! Alrighty guys, 2022 Indian Scout Rogue. So guys, the Scout Rogue sits as Indian's kind of a lightweight cruiser. This is the uh, 69 cubic inch one. It's got a 1200cc V-twin in it. This thing's got 100 horsepower and I think around 73 foot-pounds of torque. This thing should be really fun in a lightweight package. Obviously, I'm on a cruiser, so everything is going to be relative. But uh, guys, let's, uh, let's get to talking about what we do. So first off, let's talk about body position, guys. Uh, we have the forward controls. We have a very comfortable seat. Uh, the seat, I actually like a lot. It's very comfortable, but the thing I like most about it is it's actually kind of thin, but it makes me feel like I can move around. And uh, those big seats that you sit on, sometimes I feel like you can't move around on those seats, but this one, I kind of can get like, move around, get comfortable. And if you're on a, like a longer trip, you can move around and uh, like get your butt more comfortable. So I kind of like that. I actually enjoy the forward controls here. I've got my legs in a very kind of relaxed 
forward position. Typically, I'm not a fan of these ape style handlebars, and these are mini apes on here, but it kind of puts my back upright. I really am comfortable in this body position. I also feel like I have a lot of control over the motorcycle. It's a really cool combination that I didn't think I would like, because typically I'm not a fan of uh, bars like that. The combination of where my butt is, where my forward feet are, and my handlebars, I'm a really big fan of this. Uh, way, way bigger than I expected it to be. Uh, so guys, while we're here at this red light, let's talk about modes. We don't have any here. You know, as you can see, there's no modes down there. There's nothing really crazy going on tech-wise with this motorcycle other than ABS. And also, are, when are we going to get to the point where we don't even consider ABS tech? Because I know in the back of the day, it was like, oh yeah, it's got ABS. That's one of the tech things. But like, I think most bikes have ABS. I do know that there are models of this bike with our, that are non-ABS. ABS being anti-lock brakes, uh, anti-lock braking system. If you guys don't know what ABS is, I imagine most of you do though. Uh, but yeah, we are on an ABS model here and that's pretty much the only tech we have. Everything else is is pretty just the motorcycle you know and i do know that you know it seems like the market is either you like tech and you want tech or you like the kind of no tech getting in the way of you riding so hopefully if you're looking into this motorcycle you're one of those ladder people you just want to have you in the motorcycle and kind of nothing getting in the way of you riding the bike if that's the case, I think you're really going to enjoy this bike. So guys, uh, cruising around city streets, we can talk about the balance of this bike. And one of the cool things about the Rogue here is we've got that 19 inch, I believe, front tire. For a bike that weighs, I think, 454 pounds, it's not a light motorcycle. But with these taller handlebars and that 19 inch front tire, as you guys can see, it, uh, it does very easily go side to side so maneuvering around traffic here in the city it has been surprisingly good i i did not expect i don't expect any cruiser really uh to be good in traffic it's normally a a pain in the butt uh segment for the cruisers but india's got a really good balance going on right here where i feel a lot more agile than i kind of expected and it's leading to a really enjoying this motorcycle i will say with all this construction on this road the seat the only problem the seat is super comfortable it's not really the seat but that rear suspension it does not have enough travel when i go over these huge bumps it is rough it is translated directly to my back uh, so i'm not a huge fan of that uh, but i love the seat so the seat makes it not as bad Balance wise, I do feel like Indian has got the weight placed really well on this bike. Obviously I as the rider am pretty low down, but the weight feels low down as well. And I think that's one of those things that leads to this bike feeling way more agile at low speeds. Really love the balance they've got. I've, I've been playing around trying to, you know, play my little don't put your foot down game. And I've been surprised at how easy I can just kind of keep the bike balanced at low speeds. Something else that helps with that is that light seat. You know, I can move around as a rider and kind of maneuver myself. Look at that, look at that. First day on this thing, baby. First day on this thing. Woohoo! I, I have a good time doing that. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you guys have just as good of a time when you're uh, coming up to a red light and it's like, let's see how slow I can go. I can't be the only one, right? I don't think a lot of people that get on this bike would expect it to be as quick and nimble as it actually is. It makes me feel like this would be a great entry level cruiser for somebody that's coming in from a different motorcycle class, like a, like a Naked or something like that. Let's get her leaned over. Oh, that's fun. All right, I'm here for that. God, this bike carries its weight so well. A lot of vibration on that uh, engine braking. Uh, so guys, like I said, the bike comes in at a weight of 454 pounds, I believe. And, you know, when you're stopped is really when you start to feel that weight. You can lean it a little bit. It is helpful that you're so close to the ground. You've got a lot of uh, control. But once you get the bike leaned over, and this is for most motorcycles, but especially the bikes that are a little heavier, you get this bike leaned over a little bit and it just, <laughs> you can feel the weight pile on. But overall, as you guys can see with the riding we're doing, 
such a good job with kind of with the handlebars the body position the low down slung weight i feel like i can just throw this thing around and me being an idiotic rider makes it so i just have a really good time with it you know it's not often i don't typically get in this mindset on cruisers because typically cruisers are made for cruising but you give me some handlebars and a peppy little engine, a front wheel that'll let the bike go side to side easily, you start having use of a real good time. Another thing to consider, guys, uh, is this bike does not have a slipper clutch. So if you downshift too strong, you are going to probably hear some chirping <laughs> in that rear tire. So uh, just things to be careful about. This, uh, when I was saying earlier that this is a bike that's just a bike, it's you and a motorcycle, there's nothing really stopping you, that's one of the pros and cons, you know, you, you don't have a lot of electronics keeping you safe, so you can bite your own self in the butt very easily. So guys, coming up here, we are coming up to the highway, and uh, I'm pretty interested to check this out. I think this bike will have plenty of power on the highway. What I'm really curious of and going to be looking for on the highway is how good of a job does that windshield do? Uh, that's one of the things about the Rogue model specifically of the Scout is these handlebars and that shield. So hypothetically, this bike should be a pretty decent model for doing some highway time. I don't like saying the word highway time because it, it makes me feel too much like jail time and I don't want to do that. Speaking of jail time, we got the 40 to 80 pull coming up. So uh, we're going to get to see how this thing accelerates from 40 to 80. Should be a fun time on this peppy little peppy little scout we are on a uh, liquid cooled v twin implying that the bike is going to be a little more torquey than it is anything else so we got to be careful we uh, don't want to be too high in the revs all right let's prep it up guys we're on a 2022 indian scout rogue 40 to 80 let's get go And that's 80 and we're on the side road. <laughs> Alrighty. I think I probably could have been in a lower gear there, but I wasn't. So that's what it was. All right, guys, here on the highway with the Scout Road. Let's check this thing out. That body position is coming to bite me in the butt right now, guys. With being upright, I don't, I'm not leaned forward and I'm getting a lot of wind. It looks like around the upper part of my chest. And it is making it so I've got to kind of hold on to the handlebars, which you don't really want to hold on to the motorcycle like that. One of the positive things about the seat in this position is, even though I'm being pushed back by the wind, the seat, ooh, the seat has a, a good hump in the back. So I kind of go into that hump and it holds me in place. I'm really liking the seat now that we're on the highway. Now, as far as vibration, I'm getting a little vibration in my feet and I would say a small to medium amount in my hands. It's a little more than I'd rather have, but we're good God, we're going 90. Did not, no shit, we're getting a lot of wind. I didn't realize we're going so fast. Yeah, be careful on the Scout Road. You, you get to going a little quick. Uh, so guys, like I said, a little vibration. The wind is not crazy, but I'm noticing there's a ton of wind on my arms. So I've got this kind of dead zone of wind here. And then on the outer circle of my body, I got a lot of wind. It's kind of a weird feeling. Can I tuck in? I actually could, but with the apes, this is not comfortable at all. <laughs> uh, so guys, as far as actually going cruising, cruising speeds, in six gear, I can go 78. And I'm only at like 3,800 RPM. So the bike's really quiet right now. We don't have cruise control, which is really unfortunate. For me, that might be a deal breaker on a bike like this, that to not have cruise control, but that's totally up to you guys. I'm not in the market for a bike like this right now. I will say, I can have a pretty light hold on the throttle, and I can just hold speed, so that's pretty good to see. You know, if I don't have cruise control, I do look for a rather light throttle. I do notice that with these handlebar or with the bar and mirrors, I keep, I think, pushing them and making them go out of whack. So I guess that's probably, I would, I just need to tighten them a little more. Uh, overall, I'm not a fan of these handlebar mirrors, but we'll talk about those here in a minute. Uh, so guys, overall power wise, phenomenal on the highway. Uh, the wind's not too bad. I do, I, the only thing is I just really wish I had a uh, cruise control, honestly. 
It's the only thing I feel like I'm missing right now. Uh, so guys, let's do this big turn off the highway and uh, let's <laughs> let's lean the cruiser over a little more because I I love doing that. I don't know what it is about cruisers. I don't know if it's the excitement of am I gonna scrape? When am I gonna scrape? But I got a good time leaning these things over and obviously what is it about the GoPro run of first rides guys? We get such shitty uh, big turns off the highway. We always get a big truck like that. We just we, we relaxing right now. We ain't doing nothing. <laughs> Some would say we're cruising. Bad joke. Nailed it. Okay, cool. So guys, while I get out of all this traffic, let's jump over to the camera car and see what those guys think about the bike. Uh, thanks to our buddies over at Cardo. Like an all-black bike, but I gotta say, in Scout Rogue looks pretty menacing in all black. I, I'm a fan. Yeah, they do a good matte black. Uh, funny enough, this is my favorite lightweight cruiser on the market right now, and if Sure, you've heard me say this before. If they had this when I was looking for one. This would have been the one I had gotten. A lot of power, cool look, short guy friendly. Oh, that's big word. It's seeing as we're like a Dula kind of Yamaha biased shop. All right, guys in the camera car, thank you so much for your opinions, and even more so, thank you Cardo for sponsoring the First Ride series. We love you long time. If you guys wanted to get a discount on a Cardo yourself, you can get it in the description down below. All right, guys, so uh, let's talk about power on the uh, Scout Rogue. This type of power you're going to get on this bike is very what you would expect out of a V-Twin. It starts out strong, it's punchy, and then it dies off higher up in the rev range. But it's definitely the bike lets you know, and it feels right to ride the bike in that kind of power area. I really like this type of power. It's the type of power I expect when I'm on a cruiser. I will say up higher in the RPMs, this bike gets really shaky. So when you feel the bike shaking a lot, that, that can be your like physical nudge of like, hey, you need to you need to shift me to get into a better spot. Uh, as far as the transmission goes, guys, I have felt like I felt really good with the transmission. It's um, set up well the gearing wise. Every time I, I want to shift, it's the right time to shift, especially when accelerating. So Bulbasaur, awesome. We love these people. Um, yeah, the transmission is set up really well. I do get a good click when I'm shifting up through the gears, which is my main thing. And I also really like the foot placement on this bike. I'm not typically a, a forward controls type of guy or a mid controls. But this one is set up really well. Uh, like I was saying earlier, I really love the body position. One of the things kind of strange about this bike is it only has one brake rotor up front and in the rear. In the rear, it's not strange, but up front, you would expect a bigger bike like this to have two front rotors. Uh, I have not had a problem with the brakes at all. Anytime I've needed to brake, I I lay on the brakes and it's, it's adequately slowed down. It's nothing like a super sport or anything, but definitely adequate uh, that was one of the things I was worried about but to be fair I was kind of worried about that with the uh, Sportster S as well and that bike has no problem braking either so it's interesting how much power one rotor can get you slowing down I talked about shifting into gear I've had no problem uh, the bike you know not wanting to go into a gear uh, especially neutral that's been really nice I would say the feedback you get when you shift gears is kind of medium. You're not getting punched in the leg or anything by, by shifting and getting into that gear, but it's a really good amount of, uh, of feedback. Uh, rear brake works totally fine. Been using it a little bit here and there. Got no problems with that. Overall, the power, both going and stopping, has been uh, super adequate. <laughs> okay, window replacement. <laughs> with the skirt that was hilarious all right guys let's talk about the cluster up here uh very simple not a ton of stuff to talk about so all the controls work okay i uh for a twelve thousand dollar or a twelve point eight thousand dollar motorcycle i do kind of wish the controls had a little more premium of a feel i don't know if that's because of the the size you know like we've got this big control box but tiny buttons I don't know if that's kind of weird for me or what, but I just feel like the buttons look a little off. They function fine. Uh, the grips are huge. I, I'm not a huge fan of the grips. They work fine, but I just don't like these big grips. The levers as well. 
massive levers here. Uh, I find it kind of hard to, I have to stretch my hand out quite a bit to two finger the clutch. So I kind of end up just whole handing the clutch lever. These mirrors, like I said on the highway, I feel like the only issue when I have is the one on the right. I guess I just need to tighten it down some, but I feel like I adjust it and you can adjust it like that. But there's been multiple times I've gone to use it and I can't see behind me. And I think that's because my hand has just pushed it. I will say overall, I'm just not a huge fan of these underslung mirrors. They make the bike look sleek, and it's probably why Indian did it. But I find myself having to look around my arm on the right, so I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, the, the cluster up here, I got really no problems. You know, we've got this like old school digital in the bottom for our tack and our gear indicator and all sorts of other info. And then we've got the uh, digital Speedo. I do like the needle part of it. This bike is a very, you know, non-techy bike. And I feel like the tack and the controls really are very cohesive with this motorcycle. It would feel really odd if we had a really techy dash in a bike that didn't have a lot of tech. You know, it wouldn't feel congruous. So I've got no problem with it. I think this dash looks good. I think it's kind of blended into everything. So I did know the levers are big and I have a hard problem. Uh, I have a problem like getting two fingers around it. But as far as actually using the levers, I've had no problem. They feel good. It's very analog, I guess, is the best way to, to say it with the levers. It's, it's very mechanical. <laughs> That's the word I wanted to find. Uh, it's very mechanical controls. And for this style of motorcycle, like I said, it's very congruous with the way the bike is. It's, I feel like I'm actuating things when I, I use the levers, which is a cool feeling, especially in a world where we have a lot of tech on a lot of motorcycles. It, it is kind of nice to be on a like, look, it's just you and the bike situation. All right, guys, we're going to pull off up here and do a little walk around of the bike. Uh, Indians got some really cool designs going on with their bike, so... I'm going to walk around and show you kind of some of the things I like a lot on it and we'll check it out. Let's get this thing rolled in. We're going to be a very noisy walk around today, guys. All right, guys, 2022 Indian Scout Bobber. I will say something about the seat at the very top, I think it's because I'm not used to sitting in a seat like that. It hurts the top of my butt. It not hurts, it, it creates like a pressure point. So uh, there we are, guys. That is the Indian Scout Bobber. So the only thing I would change about this bike is the chrome on the exhaust here. I feel like it all needs to be blacked out to really push the vibe. But I got to tell you, Indian makes probably one of the cooler engines like this matte. I think Indian makes some of the best looking engines. I love the way uh, a lot of Indian motorcycles look. I also really like the look of that big front tire. That thing looks slick. Uh, the headlight also very cool love that looks updated at least for the looks you know then you ride it and you feel kind of old school overall i really love this blacked out look this motorcycle comes in a couple uh different colors i think the matte with the blacked out logo uh the indian thing on there absolutely that's the way to go there's in my opinion there is no other style <laughs> that uh, this bike should go with other than this uh, smoked out. I don't know what they call it, but uh, this matte black looks great. Uh, also, as a note, this is an accessory passenger seat. So uh, passengers can ride on this one. Typically, this motorcycle, this seat would end right here. So a little uh, modification there. And I think that's it. Like, I, I'm a huge fan of the blacked out look. I love that. And I'm totally here for it. Uh, so guys, I'm going to grab my phone off my quad lock here. By the way, if you guys are looking for phone mounts, quad lock, top notch. Best way to go. Uh, but guys, I'm going to take some photos for Instagram and a video for TikTok. If you guys aren't following us, we are at c 2 Picks on Instagram. And we're at Chase on Two Wheels on TikTok. We make some fun content over there. So uh, go check it out whenever you get a second. I'll be right back. All right, guys, uh, feel free to go check those out. If you're watching this video, they are up online. Uh, so let's finish this bike uh, first ride up and talk about who I think this bike is for and do a steering stem lock test. By the way, the key on the side, man, 
I don't know what it is about it, but I feel so cool every time I, I put the key in, I turn it on the side. I just feel so cool. I love it. All right, guys, steering sim lock test. Oh, sheesh. All right, this might not be bad. I kind of had pretty bad expectations. I feel like I'm a waddling. So now close to the ground. That's a solid 50% on the uh, steering sim lock test, guys. Not bad for a cruiser. That's kind of impressive. All right, guys, let's get this video finished up and see who this bike is for. Oh, we can totally go. Oh, there you go. That's fun. <laughs> All right, guys, so uh, the question is, at this point in the video, who is the Indian Scout Rogue for? I think I might have said Bobber back there. Who is the Indian Scout Rogue for? I honestly think that the ideal customer for this motorcycle is somebody that's curious about the cruiser market and they're coming from maybe something like a naked motorcycle or something more upright. This bike rides kind of like a naked bike where you're like typically with a cruiser in my experience you lose some maneuverability you add some weight and depending on which one you go with you either add or lose power. I feel like somebody that's on a naked motorcycle and wants something more chill as far as body position and the way you feel while on the bike i feel like this would be a phenomenal option because you don't really lose a lot of that maneuverability you're a lot lower to the ground so if you're a shorter rider you're gonna love this and it's got enough power to have a really fun time with i I honestly don't see a ton of need for more than 100 horsepower and 70, I think, three foot-pounds of torque. That is more than enough to have a phenomenal time on this bike. Uh, so far, my only real letdowns is the uh, rear suspension. It seems to be like if we go over some like nasty road, I feel like my back is just being hit really hard. So. I guess I, I just want a little more suspension travel in the rear. That's one of the main things I want. And also just as, as generally as a motorcyclist, I do find myself liking tech on a motorcycle a lot. So I, do, I appreciate a bike like this that's just, you know, that vibe of you and the motorcycle and nothing getting in the way. Uh, but I, I would personally like a little bit of tech. I think Indian does a phenomenal touchscreen dash. So I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. So that's what I prefer. But as far as just a raw riding experience, I think somebody, uh, this would, I think this would be a phenomenal transition motorcycle into the cruiser market. Uh, and granted, 100 horsepower and 73 foot-pounds of torque with no rider aids is, is kind of a lot to deal with. So I don't know if I would do this as a starter motorcycle. I do know that Indian offers a lower, uh, a lower cubic inch version of this. And maybe that would be a really good starter cruiser. But uh, as far as a mid-weight cruiser, I think this is in a really good spot of light and maneuverable, you know, for a cruiser that you can have a really good time on. I think somebody coming from like an MT-07 would get on this and have a damn ball. Especially since the seat, you can throttle up and the bike throws you forward and the seat kind of holds you in place. <laughs> the seat holds your hand as you're blazing your trail forward. All right, guys, so that is going to be it for the Indian Scout Rogue. Uh, like I told you guys, shout out to Indian. We do have this on loan for a little while, so let us know if there's any specific videos you guys want to see on this. In my head right now, I'm kind of wondering, do I prefer this or my Sportster S? Might have to do a comparison video between those two bikes. But if there's anything else you guys want to see, let us know in the comments, and we'll do our best to make that content for you. And guys, uh, a little shout out to Mountain Motorsports, the dealership we started at. If you guys want a discount at Mountain, they have a ton of motorcycles uh, in their inventory for all five of their locations. So there's going to be a link to check those guys out in the comments uh, or in the description. Go check them out if you're looking for your next motorcycle. Uh, they are an awesome supporter of the First Ride Show. But guys, I'm Chase on Two Wheels. You guys get out there and ride safe if the weather's good enough for you. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more motorcycle content. Later. Outro crew, I didn't forget about you. You guys know I love you a little bit longer for making it to the end of the video. 
Outstar crew, let me know in the comments down below. It would put OC in your comment. And let me know, are you one of those people that you want the raw riding experience like you get here on the Scout Rogue? Or are you kind of like me and you like all the little tech gadgets that some motorcycles are having these days? I'm wondering how split we are. But anyways, guys, you guys ride safe. I'll see you on the next one. Later.